All right, let's go this way, guys. What we have? Oh, it's a Dodge Charger. What's going on? Uh-oh. I see a transmission pan down. What's going on here? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the eight-speed ZF version of the eight-speed Chrysler version of the ZF eight-speed transmission. Okay. Uh, he has the pan off. I don't know what he's doing, but it's okay, guys, to do a transmission service. All right. Uh, Chrysler says it's a feel for life, but I see nothing wrong with changing your fluid, uh, especially if you're out of warranty. Now, from the look of this car, it's likely over 100,000 miles, which will make it likely out of warranty. So do what you will at that point. I highly recommend against doing it if you're under warranty because they say it's not to do it. <laughs> and that, for some reason, I seem to think they can use that as leverage to deny any kind of any event you have a problem, they can deny the claim because they can easily suspect you installed the, the wrong transmission fluid when you did the trans service. Now, like I say, these are fairly easy, guys. Uh, just like your typical trans service. Bolts it down. Where's his bolts? Now, here's his bolts right here. Just take all the bolts off and the pan will drop down. The filter is integrated into the pan, so you will have no separate transmission filter, okay? In fact, yes. It's a drain plug right here. You can even drain the trans fluid. All right, guys. So now what I did learn from this, guys, is uh, uh, as far as the fluid, yes, it take uh, ZF 8 and 9-speed transmission fluid. The factory, that's what it's equipped with. But I have been assured uh, by ZF uh, that uh, Valvoline, okay, Valvoline multi-car transmission fluid will, it's approved by ZF, all right? Now, I can't say the same for Chrysler. Chrysler do not approve it, okay? But ZF had a lot to do with the transmission. So, uh, I'm not sure who has the most pull. I would say Chrysler have the most pull if your car is still under warranty. That's why I'm against doing it if you're under warranty, okay? <sighs> man, it's crazy, man. It can get a little technical and it can get a little complicated. So, use your best judgment, man. I would not fool with this if it's under warranty because, quite frankly, if you got a transmission problem and you're under warranty, you can get it fixed under warranty. But as with most uh, car parts, failure do not arrive until you out of warranty. <laughs> At least that's the saying. You know, uh, I'm in the industry, so I don't uh, so much agree with that. It just it's gonna happen when it's gonna happen. I don't think there's a time on any engine or transmission to fail when you finally reach 100,000 miles and you're out of warranty. No, it don't work like that. But that seems to be the time when it fails. It's when you're out of warranty. So uh, I, I'm against doing it while you're still under warranty. But like I say, that's an inexpensive way to do it now. The fluid that Valvoline make it's not as expensive. The filter is integrated to the pan, so just get you a pan and some Valvoline fluid. They sell it in the stores. and. Uh, Crawl on the hill, get the car jacked up, fairly easy, take all the bolts off, and there you have it, guys. You will have accomplished a transmission service. Not a flush. It's the difference between a flush. Now, as far as refill, I'm going to go over that on another video. Here's the refill port. Simply, uh, some people treat this like a differential. They would take this out, just fill it all the way up. While they're in the air, they'll go through all the gears, okay? Uh... Open it back up, fill it up some more until it come out. Some people treat it like a differential. It's more complicated than that. Okay? It's very much complicated than that. If you drain your fluid, guys, you're going to lose fluid out of the clutch packs. And the way Chrysler, the way I was told at the training center in school, you have to go through all the gears. If you're going back in with trans fluid, uh, topping off, refilling, <sighs> it's some procedure. I'm going to cover that in another video. But for now, I can go through it fast. The ending results is that the transmission is full and you're coming out of the hole or fluid is coming out and you done went through all the gears. Basically, it's full at that point. But I want you to know how to do it properly as opposed to treating this like a differential refill. OK, but at the end of the day, guys, I'm sorry. That's all it is. But, you know, I'm not obligated to say that. So I won't. All right. So. Again, I don't know what he's doing. I'm going to get in his ear tomorrow, but I'm just going over the procedure. If you had one and you was thinking about doing a transmission service or getting the transmission service from that point. Yes, this is a Dodge Charger. Okay, what engine is this? Uh, not a Hemi. It's dual pan, oil pan. It might be a 3.6. 
Okay, guys, so let's go. Are we done with this topic? Uh, I guess while we're under here, guys, the differential. Don't sleep on your differential. I say that all the time. Your differential requires service, too. Here's the removal port. Uh, take that out. I think that's a 12 millimeter Allen head. And where's the other one? The refill. Might be on this side. Yes. Right here. Take that off and refill all your fluid with it. Back in the old day, we would take the cover off, but most of the differentials are sealed now. Okay, so there's no more. Hey, what happened here? Some welding been going on. I don't know if they extended this. I don't know. None of my business. But don't sleep on your diff. In fact, if you do your train service, it might be a good idea to go ahead and do your diff service. Okay, yes, we do use Valvoline uh, weight oil. Valvoline uh, oil to go in the differential. All right, so let's go down this way, guys. Let's go this way and see what's going on down here. Let's get it. All right, guys, this is the last day on this van. I'm done with it, guys. Y'all see what? Where's my switch? I finally got it. Look. And, guys, hold on. Let me show you first. Y'all see that? The seat moving. Guys, I was just corrected. <laughs> when I'm recording... Just with anybody, when they record and they're not sure what they're saying, they just say whatever come out of their mouth. I've been calling this the lumbar function. And uh, I want to call out the two guys that reminded me or corrected me. I can't remember their name because I'm not at my computer. But I was actually discussing the recline, the recline portion of the seat. That's the part that's not working, not lumbar. Appreciate you buddies that was correcting me. I misspoke. I will do that from time to time. Now, because it's already fixed and I didn't get to film you while I was fixing, let me show you what I did. All right, yes, this is a motor that worked the recline portion of the seat. I did remove this screw, did take the motor off. All right, now, you cannot get the motor off of here because this is typically a shaft that go all the way through to the other side. So the motor is basically wrapped around there. You can't even remove the motor, but it doesn't matter. There was nothing wrong with the motor. So I never made it out to pull apart. I merely backed the motor back far enough to get it off of the gears, the gear portion of the shaft, and I turned the switch on and the motor, bzzz, so what that tells me is the motor working, guys. So at this point, one of two things, the seat just jams. <laughs> I mean, this is heavy set people driving, and this seat is just simply jammed. Guys, I grabbed a pair of real hard pliers, grabbed that uh, shaft. And gave it one good hard, uh, and I can hear a pop. I freed it up, guys. Uh, I don't know if they went too far up. Like, you know, if somebody playing in the car, kids playing, they grab the switch, and they just go all the way up, and it never came back since. That's probably all what happened. Now, if he keep his kids out from playing with it, or don't nobody go all the way up, it probably likely would never jam that way again. But I basically unjammed the freaking seat by... Uh, a real good hard jerk and that freed it up and then with the motor still off i was able to move the seat back and forth so all i did was merely put the motor back in its proper place put my boat on and i merely operated and what do you know lo and behold i see that seat moving back yes my recline function is working not lumbar i was saying it wrong i think lumbar is the part that pushes in your back not the whole recline guys i'm done with this freaking car i'm sick of it and that is a wrap okay so that's all i have thanks for watching comment subscribe see y'all in the next video Ooh, man.